everyone, today I'm tackling a physics topic which is heat energy transfers. As always I'm going to keep this video as short and snappy as possible. So the three heat energy transfer ways you need to learn are conduction, convection and radiation. Let's start with conduction. So conduction is the transfer of heat without the substance itself moving. We know that really good conductors are metals which should make sense because when you pick up a pan for example that has a metal handle then you have to be careful you don't burn yourself because when the pan's been on the hob, the whole thing becomes hot, so you might need to wear an oven glove, for example. The reason why metals are very good thermal conductors is because of the arrangement of the particles. First of all, they're very close together in a very regular pattern, and metals have the added advantage of having a sea of delocalised electrons, and those electrons help to transfer heat throughout the whole metal. So, good conductors have close particles, and in the case of metals, they have free electrons. We find that wood isn't as good a thermal conductor and that's because it is an insulator. Now an insulator is a poor conductor. Air is another example of a very poor conductor and that's because the particles are very far apart because obviously air is a gas. Therefore when the particles vibrate they don't actually pass on their energy to neighbouring particles particularly well. Obviously in a vacuum, so space, where there's no particles you'll find that conduction doesn't occur at all just going to run through in detail what happens with a metal spoon when it gets hot. So if you apply some kind of heat source at one end, some I don't know what, like hot tea or something, what happens is those particles where the tea is touching become hot, they vibrate, they touch their neighbouring particle which will be right close to them because it's a solid and the heat is passed on through the neighbouring particles vibrating against each other and before you know it the whole metal spoon has become hot. So that's conduction done. Next up, I want to talk about convection. Now, conv convection is a heat transfer which occurs in liquids and gases. Kids said, get off the table. Jesus. Um, what you find here, I'm going to use the radiator as an example. So the question here is, how do whole rooms become heated when a radiator is usually only found in one or two places in the room? And this is because of convection. So what happens is the radiator heats up, then the particles of air above the radiator become warm. Because they've become warm, they've gained thermal energy, they therefore gain kinetic energy, and they start vibrating more. These vibrations mean that they occupy more space, and therefore, by definition, they become less dense. Less dense particles are lighter, so they rise, and you end up with a space where the warm particles were originally occupying. This space needs filling, so you find that colder, dense air moves in to replace that hot air that has now moved upwards, the radiator continues to heat, so it now causes those cold air particles to be heated. They do the same thing, they vibrate more, they occupy more space, they rise, and before you know it, a convection current has been set up. If we look at a fridge, we can look at the opposite argument. If the freezer compartment is at the top, you find that the air at the top of the fridge is therefore coldest. The particles are closest together because they have little kinetic energy. They are more dense, and therefore that air sinks and then the warm air moves in because it is less dense to replace it and you end up with a convection current being set up that way. Last up we have radiation and infrared radiation is, remember, it's one of the members of the electromagnetic spectrum and infrared radiation is literally given off anything that is hot and it is a wave and that is how we feel the heat from the sun because like I said before space is a vacuum and yet we're all still here and that's because we can receive heat from the sun because the infrared radiation travels across all those millions of miles to us. Um, you just need to know a couple of things which is that first of all black sub substances are very good absorbers of infrared radiation. Anyone with really dark hair like myself you'll notice in the sun that it gets really hot and uncomfortable and that's because really dark browns, black colours are good absorbers of infrared radiation. People with blonde hair and again white things, silvery objects, they are very poor absorbers of infrared radiation. They are much better emitters so that's something worth thinking about. I just want to bring what I've been talking about into a more realistic situation. So we're going to talk, take a few real life examples. Things like polystyrene cups. You might have a cup of tea in there. So what would happen therefore if you added a metal spoon to that tea? Well you would find that the tea would cool down quicker. Why? Because metal is a very good conductor so it would draw some of that heat energy out of the tea and it would be lost into the surroundings. If you place a lid on the tea you're going to slow down the, the speed at which it cools down and that's because you're trapping a layer of insulating air between the tea surface and the lid 
and we know that air is a poor conductor, it's a very good insulator because the particles are very, very far apart. And it also helps prevent convection currents being set up above the surface of the tea, which would also speed up the rates at which heat was lost. I hope you found this video helpful. There's the post. Um, I'll see you guys next time. And don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel and like my Facebook page, Science with Hazel. See you.